Every year I take a trip to South Dakota pheasant hunting with my dad. We've been doing it for years. The drive is long, so we usually leave early in the morning, but I never have trouble getting up. Usually I have a hard time staying asleep. I look forward to that trip all year, and I always find myself anxious and ready to go. You probably know that feeling, that mix of excitement and anxious nerves, a big trip, a big game, a big meeting. It's a strange mix of expectation and uncertainty, that destination still ahead of you, consuming your mind and your imagination. Can you imagine what Israel must have felt as they picked up their belongings, strapped the loads down to their carts and backs, and took their first steps down that road, headed east, the sun still rising ahead of them, the anticipation of that new land and a new life just out there on the horizon. The Bible calls the story the Exodus. For generations, hundreds of years, Israel had been subjected to slavery in Egypt. But God brought Moses to prophetically declare their freedom. It had not come easily. God put on display the power of his authority. He brought Egypt and its Pharaoh to their knees, and finally they submitted to God's command, Let my people go. So Israel began their exodus out of Egypt, but ahead of them was wilderness, a vast stretch of desert. Beyond that, the land God had promised to their forefather Abraham. That land was a new identity, a new way of living, a new future. That view represents so much of life. We all look ahead to what we hope is the fulfillment of a promise, knowing that a wilderness lies between that place and where we are and we are still filled with excitement for the journey. We read in Exodus 13, So God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness toward the Red Sea. Thus the Israelites left Egypt like an army ready for battle. The Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud, and he provided light at night with a pillar of fire. It had to have been a remarkable scene excitement, the anticipation, the miraculous cloud and fire, but it all came to a sudden stop. Just as Israel reached the edge of the Red Sea, the sounds of Egyptian chariots began to build behind them. Pharaoh had changed his mind. He would not let the Israelites go. Chaos began to spread. The Israelites began to cry out in fear. Exodus records, as Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. They cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? Pressed between the advancing Egyptian army and the edge of the sea, they were trapped and terrified. Gone was that excitement for the journey. Gone was any sense of promised land. Gone were those songs of worship and their vision of God. Their eyes were filled with fear. This too is life. To find our dreams dashed against the rocks and taken by an unjust hand. How quickly we too panic and break. From one another, from the promise, and from God. But Moses' response is amazing. Moses told the people, don't be afraid, just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. Maybe the scene is familiar to you. God commanded Moses to lift his hands over the waters and miraculously the seas parted, revealing a path of dry ground between the waves. Israel passed through and just as they reached the far side, Moses again lifted his hands and the waters collapsed onto the advancing Egyptian army. Israel 
had been delivered. There's so much in this story that inspires and challenges our faith. Our God was and is a God of deliverance. But maybe the heart of this story is a simple realization. Israel's journey was not initiated or rescued by their planning. The journey was initiated by God's deliverance. Who they were was not defined by where they were going. Who they were was defined by the God who had delivered them. They were God's people by the power of his hand. That story of the Exodus becomes our story. It is the story of every person who, in that moment of fear, calls out to God and discovers that he is a God who delivers. It's the story of those who, by humility and astonishment, realize that their path is not their plan, but his deliverance. And like Israel, we are forever marked by that deliverance we have received. God delivers his people, guides his people, blesses his people, and all those who choose to follow become his. Listen.